So now we have seen how to create relationships between two entity types. But often you need more than two entity types to accurately characterize a relationship. We're going to explore such relationships now. We call those n ary relationships a relationship of n degree. The most common are ternary relationships, which bring three entity types together. There are also quaternary relationships, which bring four entity types together, and so on. Let's explore. So let's envision a renovation project that could happen at a typical university. And we want to track some information about the renovation projects. So in the bottom right hand corner of the slide, you see a project. You see a space in a building, maybe the Robinson building, and we want to renovate that space. When we renovate that space for that particular project, we're going to use various parts, tables, chairs, or perhaps this lovely plastic ficus tree. Nothing says love more than a plastic ficus tree. And those parts have to come to us from various suppliers. Fortunately for us, the supplier Plants R Us has a wide selection of plastic ficus trees that we can use in the project. So this seems very simple. We have a project entity, a parts entity, and a supplier entity. And we're going to use these to build our ER diagram, our relationships. So let's take a look at our entity types, project, part, and supplier. And we'll begin with talking about the relationship between a project and part. As we've already said, a project can purchase many parts. But a part could also be purchased by many different projects. We could reuse those ficus trees in many different renovation projects. But then there's also a relationship between a part and a supplier. And we can say that a part is supplied by multiple suppliers. Maybe there's more than one company that can provide us with the ficus tree. But a supplier naturally can also supply many parts. So again, there's a many-to-many -many relationship between part and supplier. There might also be a relationship between a project and a supplier, as shown here. This indicates that a project can contract multiple suppliers and a supplier can be contracted by multiple projects. Now, given this representation, we have three binary relationships, all of them many to many. In order to model that physically, we need to build a bridging table between each pair of entities. You will see an example of that in the next slide where I show the physical model and we actually populate it with some data including our favorite Robinson renovation project and the nearly natural ficus tree. So what do we know now about the Robinson renovation project? You can see that we have some data in all of the tables, including the bridging tables between the entity types, between the many-to-many -many relationships that we have not very ingeniously entitled by the names of the two tables they are bridging. So let's take a look at the Robinson Renovation Project. We can see that it is Project ID 1. And we know that project ID 1 appears in the supplier project table three times. And then we can look at each one of those and see what suppliers were used, why supplier 1 was used, that's KI. Supplier 2 was used, that's Staples. And supplier 3 was used, that's Plants R Us. What else do we know about the Robinson Renovation Project? Well, we know that it, as a project ID, was used here, here, and here. And those project IDs correspond to three part IDs. Part ID 1, 
which is the error on chair, port ID 2, which is the Lehrman table, port ID 3, which is the nearly natural ficus tree. So that's what we know about the Robinson Renovation Project. So now we will try to answer a few questions about this data model. But as the title at the top says, we're going to see some data loss, and that's not going to be good. But let's start with question one in red. Who supplied the ficus trees for the Robinson project? Well, I can start my exploration at the project table. I can find the primary key, project ID 1. Uh, I then want to find out about the ficus tree. So I want to move in this direction. And I will take that project ID as a primary key, and I will match it up into the project parts table as a foreign key. So that project ID 1 appears here, here, and here. And I will then use those part IDs to connect to my part table. Now we can see there's part one, part two, and part three, but it's really this record right here with project ID one, the Robinson Renovation Project, and part ID three, the nearly natural ficus tree that builds my bridge between these tables. When we match a primary key with a foreign key, we call that a join. So I would join the project table to the project parts table and then join that table to the parts table. But of course we are not done yet. Now I have to find out who the supplier was. So I'm going to need to now move in this direction and get the name of the supplier. So let's take part ID 3 which we can see right here. That's the match. And in the supplier parts bridging table I can tell that the supplier was supplier number three. And so then I can take that foreign key and map it to the primary key of suppliers. And yes, as expected, Plants R Us provided us the ficus tree for the Robinson renovation project. All right, let's now try the second question. The second question is, who supplied the Aeron chairs for the Robinson project? So we will again go into our projects table. We'll find the project ID 1 for the Robinson renovation. We will then make sure that they did, in fact, use Aeron chairs. We'll take that project ID as a primary key into the project parts table, where it exists as a foreign key. And then, as you note, the Aeron chair is part number one, and part number one is right here. So indeed, the Robinson Renovation Project did use an Aeron chair. And then I will take that part ID of the Aeron chair, and I will look it up to find out who supplied it. But then I run into a problem, because here is the Aeron chair. And that Aeron chair is supplied by supplier number one, KI. But then I see that that part ID is also again repeated in the table, but with supplier ID two, and that is Staples. Can I get any help the other direction? Can I get any help looking this way? Well, I know that project ID 1 is right here, and they used all three suppliers. Okay, so maybe I can figure out three suppliers, three parts should be easy to figure out. The problem, though, is that, as we can see here, supplier 1 can supply part one, that's the air on chair, but supplier one can also supply part two. So that's KI. KI can supply the air on chair and KI can supply the Lehrman table. So I can look at supplier two, 
that staples, and we learn that staples can supply part one, the air on chair. Oh, and staples can also supply part two, the Lehrman table. So what do I know? I know the Robinson project is using an air on chair, the Lehrman table, and a nearly natural ficus tree. I'm pretty sure the nearly natural ficus tree comes from Plants R Us. In fact, I can prove that with the data. But the problem is that the Robinson Renovation Project used an Aeron chair part and it used a Lehrman table part. And each of those parts can be supplied by the, the two other suppliers. So we don't know the answer to this question. Maybe KI supplied the Aeron chair and Staples supplied the Lehrman table. Or maybe Staples supplied the Aeron chair and KI supplied the Lehrman table. We simply don't know. What we have now, sadly, is data loss. Our model cannot answer all the questions. This is a really good exercise and whenever you're doing data modeling, it's often a good idea to actually put it in some tables, make some sample data of your own. See if the data model you came up with is sufficient to answer all the questions you have, even the tough ones like this. Sometimes data loss is hard to spot. You need to have the data constructed in such a way as to show all possible cases. So for example, if it turned out that Staples did not supply the Lehrman table, then there would not be this row in the database. And then by deduction, we could figure out that it was Staples that provided the Aeron chair, meaning that KI provided the Lehrman table. But you don't want to be in a situation where you hope to be able to answer a question. And this is why it's important to take your data and put it into the model and exercise your data model. Having three binary relationships failed us. So instead, I am remodeling this as a ternary relationship. And I changed the relationship name to supplies. Now we can say that a project, a part, and a supplier come together in this new relationship that I want to call supplies. This way we can bring three parties together into basically one relationship. You will also notice that there is no cardinality on these lines anymore. Once you move into ternary relationships, and even worse, quaternary or higher number of relationships, it becomes very difficult to express the cardinalities accurately. There are ways to do it that are more advanced that we're not going to cover. So for now, I'm just going to leave them off. But we will soon see how to take a ternary relationship like this and turn it into a physical data model. But for now, at least I know if I model things this way, then if I had an Aeron chair as a part, and if I had the project of Robinson Renovation, I would link the supplier to it. So I would know exactly which supplier supplied those Aeron chairs.